Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're solving a thermodynamics problem on the isothermal process. Let's get started and work through it together. Here's the problem. A sample consisting of 2.00 moles of helium gas is expanded isothermally at 0 degrees Celsius from an initial volume of 5.0 cubic decimeters to a final volume of 20.0 cubic decimeters. We need to calculate Q, W, and delta U for two cases. 1. Reversible expansion. 2. Expansion against a constant external pressure equal to the final pressure of the gas. Isothermal process means the temperature, T, is constant throughout the process. Let's start with the reversible isothermal expansion. Here's how we solve it. The work done by the gas in a reversible isothermal expansion is given by W equals minus nRT times the natural log of V final divided by V initial. N is the number of moles of gas, which is 2.00 moles. R is the universal gas constant, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. T is the temperature in Kelvin. Since the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, we convert it to Kelvin by adding 273.15. So, T equals 273.15 Kelvin. V final is the final volume, which is 20.0 cubic decimeters. V initial is the initial volume, which is 5.0 cubic decimeters. Now, let's plug these values into the formula to calculate the work done, W equals minus 2 times 8.314 times 273.15 times the natural log of 20 divided by 5. That gives W is approximately negative 6,296.46 joules. The negative sign indicates that the work is done by the gas during the expansion. Now, Let's calculate the change in internal energy, delta U. For an ideal gas, the internal energy, U, depends only on temperature. The general formula for the change in internal energy is delta U equals NCV delta T. N is the number of moles of gas. CV is the molar heat capacity at constant volume. Delta T is the change in temperature. However, in this problem, the process is isothermal, which means the temperature, T, is constant. Therefore, the change in temperature, delta T, is zero. So, for an isothermal process, the change in internal energy is always zero, regardless of whether the process is reversible or irreversible. This is because the internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature. And since the temperature is constant, there is no change in internal energy. Now let's determine the heat transfer during the reversible isothermal expansion. To do this, we'll use the first law of thermodynamics, which relates heat transfer, work done, and the change in internal energy. For an isothermal process, we already know that the change in internal energy is zero because the temperature is constant. Therefore, the first law simplifies to 0 equals W plus Q. Rearranging this equation, we get Q equals minus W. This means that the heat transferred to the system is equal to the negative of the work done by the system. So, the heat transferred to the system during the reversible isothermal expansion is approximately 6,296.46 joules. The positive sign indicates that heat is absorbed by the system. Now, let's move on to part two. The gas expands against a constant external pressure, which is equal to its final pressure. Since the external pressure remains constant during the expansion, the process is irreversible. And because it's irreversible, the way we calculate the work done by the gas is different. For irreversible expansion, 
Work equals negative px times delta v. Here, px is the constant external pressure, which the problem tells us equals the gas's final pressure, p final. So first, we need to find p final. We'll now use the ideal gas law at the final state. That's p final equals nRT divided by v final. Here are the values we'll use. The number of moles, N, is 2 moles. The gas constant, R, is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. The temperature, T, is 273.15 Kelvin. That's 0 degrees Celsius. And the final volume, V final, is 20 decimeters cubed, or 0 0.02 cubic meters. Now, let's plug in the numbers. 2 times 8.314 times 273.15, then divide by 0 0.02. That gives P final equals 227,000 pascals, which is the same as 227 kilopascals. Now, back to our work formula. We know that the external pressure, Px, is equal to the final pressure. That's 227,000 pascals. The change in volume, delta V, is V final minus V initial. That's 20.0 minus 5.0, which equals 15.0 decimeters cubed, or 0 0.0150 cubic meters. So, the work done by the gas is W equals negative 227,000 multiplied by 0 0.0150. That gives W equals negative 3,405 joules, or approximately negative 3.41 kilojoules. Now, let's calculate the variation of internal energy, delta U. As we discussed earlier, for an isothermal process, the internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on temperature. Since the temperature remains constant during this expansion, the change in internal energy is always zero, whether the process is reversible or irreversible. Now, let's calculate the heat transfer, Q, using the first law of thermodynamics. Remember, the first law states, delta U equals Q plus W. Since we've already established that delta U equals zero, for this isothermal process, the equation simplifies to Q equals minus W. From our earlier calculation in part two, we found that the work done by the gas is W equals minus 3,405 joules. Plugging this in, we get Q equals minus minus 3,405, which gives us positive 3,405 joules. Let's recap what we've learned. During reversible isothermal expansion, the system performed negative 6,293 joules of work. This represents the maximum possible work output. In the irreversible expansion against constant pressure, the work was only negative 3,405 joules, demonstrating how real processes lose efficiency compared to ideal reversible ones. Got questions? Drop them in the comments below. For more thermodynamics explained simply, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.